Hi, I'm Pete from Project Heaven. I'm gonna do a quick video of the do's and don'ts of XK Jag engine building. Here we've got uh, an example of a don't. So this is an engine that's come in in a car that uh, we're restoring. It's the original engine for the car, so it's matching numbers. Now, this engine's got had a lot of problems with it, and we're gonna go through all of the issues that uh, have happened with it. The engine we think was built uh, over in the States, uh, and it hadn't really been run. Uh, so we, we uh, finished bolting the bits and bobs on and gave it a test run, uh, and then we soon realized that there was water pouring out the side of the head. So we, we stopped the test and thought, right, we need to strip this down and see what exactly is going on here. So the first thing, what, why, was the, uh, why was the water pouring out of the head? Over on the cylinder head here, we can see that there's a lot of damage on cylinder number five. On Jags, of course, cylinder number one is the one at the back of the engine. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think because this valve here is different from all the others, it's probably dropped a valve and the valve head's probably come off, smashed all around inside here, hence why the block has been bored out so much. It's, out to, it's already out to size uh, plus 40. Uh, and what they've done is they've got their welder out and they've welded all of this head back together as best they could and then skimmed it afterwards. But there's a large crack where the compression, uh, where the gasket sits for the, for the cylinder head, right through where the, uh, where, where the fire is, like the fire ring kind of thing. And then the, uh, inside the combustion chamber here, we can see a clear hole straight through to the water jacket. So it didn't have to stand any hope of working. I don't know why they thought that'd be okay. Also over here, this, this, this cylinder as well seems to have had some weld repair as well. So obviously something pretty catastrophic went wrong with this engine. So that's the, that's, that's the issues with the cylinder head. So to remedy that, uh, we could possibly laser weld this and have it ceramic impregnated or we can find a uh, new head, a new substitute head. So we'll, we'll see which way we want to go with that. The next thing, um, looking at the, uh, the, so the pistons. So we took the uh, pistons out of the block and pistons are all in good shape. I mean, they've hardly seen any, any uh, running. I think probably we were the first people to run the engine up. But the um, big ends, the bearings are heavily scored already, really badly damaged, like immediately. So perhaps they assembled it dry without any lube or put no proper assembly lube because of course you can't just use engine oil if you're gonna leave the engine sat for a long time. It needs to have a type of oil that has a lot of stiction so it stays there. So proper assembly lube should have been used. That's possibly a reason, but it may also be because the crank, uh, when I took that out, I can see it hadn't been ground, which is good news for us because you can't really grind XK engine cranks very much. I know they sell plus 10, 20, 30, 40, um, undersize, but uh, really, in my opinion, you only want to go to 10. So luckily this is at nothing at the moment, it's a standard. So we can now grind this to, to 10 and it'll be perfectly happy. But when I looked at it, I can feel there's a, you can even hear that. There's a deep scoring in all of the big ends. That's probably why that didn't last very long. And then the other thing we did to the crank is, uh, we took all of these, plugs out of the crank. They're, um, just move that out of the way. These are drillings that are blanked off when these cranks assembled for uh, the oil feed for all of the journals. But you absolutely must remove these when you rebuild a JAG engine. I mean, I know they're very hard to get out because they're pegged in, they're staked in. But when you take them out, there's a huge amount of crud kept behind here. I don't know if I can fish some out with a bolt to show you. But, yeah. So, and that's just, that's great. You know, that's gonna be harmful for the engine. So you have to cut all the plugs out, rod it all through with a gun cleaning kit, buy like a, like a air rifle cleaning kit, get it all soaked in thinners, rod everything through, get it nice and clean, brand new plugs, stake those back in, that's that sorted. Uh, the other thing on these, what we normally do is we machine off the oil scroll. It's like an Archimedes screw uh, kind of seal. So there's no actual seal on the back of this early type engine, but they're notorious for leaking. Not so much of a problem on this car because it's an automatic, but uh, 
for for a car with a clutch, it's, it could be a bit of a problem because you're getting oil all over the uh, clutch plates, obviously. So we machine that off and we put a modern um, lip seal on instead. It's a common conversion we do. Now, leading on from that, in the block, the, the chap that rebuilt this in his infinite wisdom got his gasket set and went, oh, I've got this bit of rope here. I think that must go in the back in here. So he's stabbed that into the back of the block here, which is actually not meant to have a seal in at all. There's not meant to be anything in there because it's an Archimedes screw. And that rope seal has been running on the uh, oil slinger that's, on the, that's machined on the back of the crankshaft. So <laughs> if we have left this running for a rather long, long amount of time, that would have got very hot. And it would have probably, it would have, well, it would have, it would have scored the crank and um, overheated it. And we could have probably had a rear main go because of all the friction. So good job we didn't run it for very long. <laughs> so that's one of the worst things that was wrong. Um, the other lovely thing that's been done is there's this horrible blue goo on everything. This cheap, like bathroom sealant type RTV. Well, it's not really RTV, it's just silicon sealant. Which you really mustn't use, and especially in these large quantities, because when it all drops off and goes into the sump, it can block the strainer on the oil pump and, re and reduce the oil pressure and kill the engine. And I've actually, I've seen engines where people have put um, oil pressure senders in with this stuff uh, and blocked the oil pressure sender off, so they think they've got no oil pressure, but actually it's just because it's got that blocked in. And another one I've seen, which was really bad, um, the oil feed for the camshaft was external, and it blocked the oil passage for the camshaft. So it kept wearing out cams and the guy couldn't figure out why. It was like throwing cams all the time. But I got an endoscope in there and found a huge lob of, a blob of uh, RTV sealant stuck in the passage. So be really careful with that stuff. Try not to use it. We, like I said in the previous video, we use well seal on all this sort of stuff. It's much thinner. Okay, the mains actually are very good. So that's okay. But regardless, we're gonna uh, replace all this with ARP hardware. Uh, and have the whole thing line honed to make sure there's no issues there in the future. Uh, if we spin this around now. Right. So, on one of these cylinders, this one, cylinder four, you can probably hear this as well. There's a massive score in the bore. And the funny thing about this score is, it's not actually straight up and down. So it's not like there's been a problem with the piston and uh, you know, it's picked something up and scored the bore, it's more likely an assembly issue. Someone's put the piston in and it, there was a bit of grit on the piston or something like this. And as it's twisted it down into the bore, it's damaged the side of the bore. And it's, it's quite deep. I mean, that's gonna have to be bored out to get rid of it. The other problem as well with the deck face, it's been really badly uh, uh, surface ground, or it's not been, it looks like it's been fly cut to be honest. And Again, it's rough finish and there's large, deep scratches in it going right through the gasket um, interface here as well. So that's no good. That will have to be cleaned. Another interesting thing is that the, uh, the head had been put on, but it hadn't been taut down. And, it, uh, and the chap had painted the whole thing with green paint to, ma to match the uh, original head. And the green paints run under here, under the gasket overnight, I assume. And then the next day he's obviously come and tightened all the nuts on properly. And you've got this paint inside with it where there should be uh, gasket uh, material. The other <coughs> another thing on this block that when we took the uh, the freeze plugs or the core plugs out, half of them were held in with sealant. So if you look at this, it's all it's all sealant on it. So I guess, and they've really battered them in as well, far too much. I mean, they are notorious for dropping out and leaking. So what we do is we we would put a a, thi a thin smear of um, like a Loctite on there, put put it in, give it a good uh, tap with a with a drift, and then drill either side and strap it in with some spring steel so it actually applies pressure to the core plug and keeps it in. Because they are notorious for popping out. Later models of the engine, it was a different design of core plug, which wasn't so prone. Another thing, lock tabs. They were all the original old ones. They'd been bent over and reused. Half of the ears had been snapped off. You know, always replace the lock tabs. That's really important. And another thing, the guides. These are the chain guides for the uh, chain for the uh, timing chains. Now they were completely misaligned. Uh, some of them were sort of like five millimeters away from the chain, or they were wonky. These should all just be kissing the chain. That's the sort of the thing you're looking for. I like to put them in and just ha have it so you can hold a piece of paper and pull and you know just slightly. 
So it's just, it's just running on it. That's what it should be like, but not all over the place. Uh, another really fun one, the, the um, chain tensioner, which is hydraulic, but needs to be released when it's put in place, hadn't been released. So it was stuck in its closed position um, and wouldn't, wouldn't have actuated properly. So to summarize, this is one of the worst uh, Jag engine rebuilds we've done, but for some strange reason, all the, the the most badly rebuilt engines I come across are Jag ones. I don't know why, but for some, for some reason that seems to be the case. Um, I mean, they do have some peculiarities and some things you need to know when you're rebuilding them. Um, and we've built numerous, numerous Jag engines for all different types of Jaguars. So if you've got a Jaguar engine and you want it doing properly, bring it to us, we will sort it for you. <laughs>